All right. Welcome to the School of Bitcoin. Um, yeah, Karen, did you want to continue with your, your story from the, the conference? Festival uh, of Dangerous Ideas. Yeah, sounds cool. <laughs> it was so interesting. It was so interesting. And being run by the Ethics Centre, um, it's really, I really valued what they do. <laughs> and um, the different speakers they had, like, like I just said, unmasking based Facebook with um, Frances Hagen. Um, she talked about seeing um, beyond content moderation to build social media if we feel good about is often often the different sorts of things that people want to do. Um, be, uh, some of her quotes, be careful what you select because you will get it. <laughs> and what do we want driving our attention? How is, how is our attention being directed? Do we want humans or computers focusing our attention? Um, how can we test for credibility? We choose to give our own data. And there were, there were questions and answers about what's the difference between monetizing and WhatsApp and um, lots of different questions and answers. Another, sent, another sent, uh, session I went to was Caught in a Web. And that was by Kevin Bruce and chaired by Toby Walsh. And um, Kevin Bruce is, an, uh, a, is um, host of The Rabbit Hole. So that might be something worth li listening to or joining. And he's written an art an article, he's writes the New York Times too, an article, um, for example, we need to talk about how good AI is. We're getting in a gold, are we getting in a golden age or progress in AI? And he also spoke about, spoke about what's shaping up, what, what's, what's on the other side of our screens. The machines run the show. YouTube, 70% um, of time spent on due to recommendations. And, um, and I, I can keep going, keep going. Mm. But, you know, who, who really, and how, Everything we do is so recorded. I think I spoke of that a little bit about when I went to the museum in Adelaide about invisible, <laughs> what's invisible. And I could just keep going and going. <laughs> I went to as many sessions as I could. <laughs> and it was just interesting on so many different levels. And with people like Stan Grant there, with um, Ali Walid, with so many very interesting, Stephen Pinker, so many very, and Simon Longstaff, the, the head of, the chair of um, the Ethics Centre. Uh, mm. It's really very inspiring and interesting. And I just saw so many connections mm. in different ways to build understanding with what we're doing as well. Did, did, they, did they come up with any um, solutions at all to, the, to those issues as part of their presentations? Look, there were so many different presentations that talked about way forward. What's the way forward now? And um, one of the books I bought was Future Proof. Oh, cool. Um, that was Nine Rules for Humans in the Age of Automation. Um, there were just so many really interesting and um, fascinating ideas. Because yeah, yeah, I think I, like I think like with those like Facebook and YouTube taking your attention and all that that's all um web 2 technologies right so like what we've been talking about with this and um the, the technologies that we're pursuing and building on they're all web 3 so they kind of address all the problems with these big companies owning your data and um you know <laughs> spying on you and all the nasty stuff that facebook does and they've kind of resolved that that's why i think like one of the the biggest pieces to that is is ipfs so like as a protocol not as a um i don't know i'm not not a big fan of the the file coin thing that got attached to it afterwards but the actual um protocol for the internet like it fixes all those issues so you have things like the right to be deleted and ownership of your own data and sharing with who you want when you want and then being able to revoke that as well and there's all um default encryption encryption methods that you can utilize with it so it's it's it'd be interesting to hear like where because i think i think like the, it's really important that people on because so many people are still on facebook and all these platforms but 
I think it's important to give them the alternatives as well. So it's like, what are we building towards and what what is the, the tech that's out there? But that, that's how, that sounds really thought-provoking, Karen. That sounds cool as definitely worth going to. And I think I, what you've just said then should be part of education in schools from a very early age. <laughs> because yeah. children have an iPad in their hands as soon as they can hold one. <laughs> but uh, it's just, it's so important to help people understand that what do you trust and what is, what makes, what builds trust? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or trustlessness. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, As yeah. you grow old, you don't start from a basis of trust anymore like you used to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's really cool. That sounds, sounds interesting. Well, we've got the, the, uh, the, um social ventures um uh, world mm -hmm. forum coming up in frankston so if you're i don't know if you if you're coming down to that karen but it should be pretty interesting i'll be there for the the full day so it's uh i think from 9 a.m till 7 or something so we'll have speakers and all sorts of stuff um i don't know did you get did you get um any updates for that or um tickets because i could probably see if i can get you no, one still no i haven't i haven't okay um... You did tell me about it, but you can send me some updates and ticket. That'd be great. What was it? The twenty? It's very soon, isn't it? Twenty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, so many things going on. Yeah. Let's have a look. Anyway, look, it's okay. We, we can work that out. Twenty <laughs> fourth is meant to be an event this weekend, but I don't know what that's going on. And then we've got the actual thing next. Twenty uh, ninth. Uh, the next Thursday. Right. Um, <laughs> gardeners here. <laughs> um, cool. Well, that sounds really cool. Uh, Karen, that sounds like a really worthwhile conference that you went to. Electra, did you want to give us some updates on, on the crypto conference that you went to in, in Sydney? It sounds amazing. Oh, it wasn't in Sydney. It was Gold Coast. It was, Gold Coast. So it was, um, yeah. it was a very productive, um, exciting time, a very, very collaborative, open piece. It was, um, yeah, a lot, there was a lot more talk about the technology. My key takeaway from it is that people, were, it wasn't like a big futurist talk. It was amazing what they did too. Two days, a weekend, and they packed about 90 sessions into two days. And we were just running around from theatre to theatre. And, and um, so it was quite hectic. And I took about, I had about 10 accountants with me so we were on a tour together and it was um so it was very um educational and um learned a lot and i've lost all my notes i'm taking notes on my phone they've disappeared oh, man. Um, <laughs> yeah uh it was it was brilliant but yeah it wasn't like a futurist talk people were talking about this is what we've done and this is improving. This is what the future will look like, and um, really practical um, advice. In, there was like a little shilling here and there, but that wasn't dominant. Um, uh, there, right at the end, the, the session. I don't have their names right with me right now, but there was an education session that um, Danielle uh, was part of, and um, about sort of corporate um, education and right. just education in general um, and they're using the term web3 rather than blockchain because it's web3 is a more accessible and and, and broader kind of term was a yeah chain. yeah just technology. So i just thought that was interesting to note because i've been wondering is web3 becoming a real word now yeah. <laughs> or is it just a, a, an expression to explain that we've departed they said that's the important thing for people to understand first that there's been a journey of the internet and so to Web3 immediately puts things into context, whereas if you mm -hmm. say blockchain, it's just like, oh, that's just part of the technology that makes other tech better. It's not a, it's not a main thing. Definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. It's it's interesting because the, the Web3 terminology, I've been using it for years now um, and like yeah. using those diagrams of like how it's expanded from Web1 to Web3. And I think it resonates with people, but I think it, it's for a little bit, it's been hijacked by the ICO type people <laughs> from what I've seen, which I hate because it's like, it's not that, right? Like it's, there's, there's all this cool tech, like I mentioned, IPFS, which isn't monetary based and it's a, a distributed 
web that fixes all the issues of, of web two, web one. Um, I understood that there was a session on IPFS and I was trying to understand the connection between Filecoin and IPFS that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like storage did something um, similar. So it's basically sharing your spare hard drive space and earning like coins off it, but I, so it was to create an incentive for participation, was it? The yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it doesn't really need that. You know what I mean? Like IPFS, it runs on its own. Like anyone can spin up a node on any device. We can have like all of us connected, sharing mm -hmm. our stuff between each other. So it doesn't really need incentive for it. And I think if they were going to implement it, like do it on Lightning. Like that would, that would make way mm -hmm. more sense than creating a whole new token and then, you know, getting it listed and going through all the, the stuff that they had to go through. It's like, you've got yeah. this amazing tech and it, it knits so nicely with the BTC blockchain because of the, the hash, like it just makes sense. But um, oh, that sounds cool. So it sounds like it was a, a pretty worthwhile event then. I know um, yeah, there's a few people that went and said it was, was pretty amazing. Got my PO app. So um, Lucas, Lucas Cullen saved the day because the NFT didn't work. The NFT tickets didn't work for everyone. So he provided everyone PO apps. And so I had a little um, session with the accountants afterwards on how to, what a PO app is and how to get one. Well, that, that so, might be a hot, hot tip for Karen for the, the thinking conference. <laughs> we, we really test the NFT stuff if we're going to do that for the, for the tickets. Um, yeah. That's cool. Really cool. Um, Thanks, thanks last week for hosting Gordon. Um, I was flat out. I've been flat out all week pretty much, but it's uh, it's been getting pretty crazy. But I had a really cool um, thing I wanted to share with you guys, and I'll just share my screen. Where are we? Faculty meetings. You guys see that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so what I wanted to do with the, the score of Bitcoin, um, actually, I'll, I'll go to this first because this is super cool. So basically, during the week, um, Tiggs actually brought this up because he found all these cool apps, uh, like new apps that have been built on um, Lightning. And one of them is this. So this is actually run on something called Strike. And Strike is the um, underlying tech that allows or enables um, cross-country like borderless transfer over lightning to whatever currency it is so that's what they're using for El Salvador for emissions and um, like all these different countries that are, that are being onboarded by it but they've built this application on top of strike as well and what it does it enables you to do peer-to-peer -peer conversations over lightning so whether that's um, video calls or messaging directly, you set whatever price it is. So we could go and speak to Jack Dorsey now if we wanted to for 38 cents a message. Um, but the amazing thing is, I thought this would, uh, must just be like for America or something, but we tested it between myself and, um, and Tiggs and we were like, oh my God, you can use this anywhere in the world. Now it's not just lightning. What you can do is actually people can sign up with their credit card, pay, and it transfers it immediately into sats and puts it into your lightning wallet. I was just absolutely blown away. So he messaged me on here and we were messaging back and forth over the lightning network. So this is like a killer app for the lightning network. It's, it's a game changer. So like the, Basically, what this means is now we can have a, a completely decentralized, so you know, anywhere in the world, it doesn't have, it's not predicated on the location, still using the legacy um, monetary system and then communicating on the Lightning network. But I was thinking specific to us, we could do tutoring over this for anybody that needs or wants tutoring for communication, right? So what I was thinking, for the school of Bitcoin, because we all have like, you know, a, a diverse set of skills. Why don't we set up a, a community page with each of our um, profiles and what skills we have? Um, and that's like for, you, for yourself, Karen, we could set you up and you could do um, like thinking routines over lightning. 
All right. So like you don't even have like you don't even have to know about the underlying tech to be using it. It's like email. So you like you can use an email, but you don't know how SMTP works. You can use Lightning now to do tutoring for whatever it is that you're you're sort of interested in. So that was one piece of the tech. The other piece is uh, Albi. So Albi is this amazing lightning wallet. Um, hang on, let's just log in. Oh, God. I just haven't been able to sign into Vida. I don't know if anyone else is having troubles. I just get could not verify account information when I put in my phone number and email address and name. Okay. All right. Well, much rather we do. Same yeah. problem. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's interesting then. Um, what about Albi? Um, I started with Albi. I'll, I'll just do that now. So you should have, because we could probably change my password or something. Something funny oh. happened. So. Well, that's all right. <laughs> We can get to the bottom of that. Then I'm locked, but I don't know. <clears throat> Choose an unlock password. So, sure. Okay. Um, these guys have also launched a page. But what I, what I love about Albi is the fact that um, you can either go custodial or non-custodial, and it looks exactly the same to you. So, like, what you could do is set it up, set it up with your email, whatevs, and then at that like that you can leave it like that. And then when you're comfortable enough to run your own node and to be like your own custodian, you can shift it across. So it's not like one or the other. So I thought that was really cool as well. Um, and I haven't seen many apps that kind of do that. There's a few out there, but even like Wallet of Satoshi, as cool as it is, is all custodial. Like there's no path to, um, to sort of owning it yourself. So um, that's why I thought these two mix really well together. But um, the... Yeah, so the concept is, anyway, I thought if we can each get a Vita page up and running, so we'll, we'll work on that today, and mm -hmm. each get an Albi account running, then we can start doing, yeah, tutoring on the um, on the Lightning Network specifically. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and we can come come back to, to Vita and, and run through that. So, Kieran, just come back to that. So basically, you set yeah. your own tutoring rate. That, yes. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so communication rate. So it could be one cent if you want to. <laughs> um, and it's someone contact because one of the guy on the on the fate on the startup thing, the start of that app, it actually is one guy says he wants three thousand seven hundred dollars a minute. <laughs> 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 That's uh if you have a look there. Did you, did you choose a, an optional lightning address at getlb.com? <laughs> Preston Fish. Sorry, what was that, Alexa? With the setup, you when you set up your LB Lightning wallet, yep. did you it comes with an optional lightning address? Did yeah. you choose a lightning address at getlb.com? Uh I can't remember. Hang on. I've set it up quite a while ago. On, yeah, stop. it's interesting. Paul Paul Barron's $99.40 a minute and 94 cents a message if you want to speak to him. <laughs> but Jack Jack's pretty cheap. 30, 30, 30 yeah. cents a minute. Or, or was... a text message for 38 cents is pretty cool of Jack. I know. I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, did you want to share your screen, Electra, and I can run you through it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I started setting it up here. All righty. So, uh, and so I clicked on this. Oh, yeah. Perfect. It, so just to. Uh, no, so, sorry. Go back, go back to the other, other page. Yeah. Uh, just type in there um electra okay and then continue yeah that's nice and short i finally got electra i usually have to put frost <laughs> done um so now you've got look at that so <laughs> yeah you're signed in so you can actually install the oh you got the extension too awesome yeah yeah very cool um so now you can click on yeah give it a click on give it a go um where are we we need to get to the dashboard so there's an app um on your phone so i use blue wallet on my phone and you can connect to this so you can you can see it off your phone as well oh, I can do it on my phone. um but if you scroll scroll back up yeah and just just get rid of the demo part at the end of getalbi.com oh okay 
go enter. And then go to dashboard up on the right hand side there. So let's go. Uh, yep. Log in. Beautiful. So now if you go to wallet, I believe it is. And if you just scroll down. Where are we? Uh -huh. Sorry, now go, go, go back to the top. Just go settings. Yeah. And Albi page. So if you click on that Albi page. Oh, yeah. That's my Electra page. Right. Yep. Um, so you can do your do your GIF on there. Uh huh. Oh, sorry, your um your your avatar. Uh huh. And my name, I'll just. Type oh, yeah, Electra. Just go Electra, yep. And then go. I'll name it. Okay. Then go. And, um, to like that. If you I have don't it. Have any, uh, uh. Not, not <laughs> I'm on a brand new computer this morning. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, that's all right. Just go update. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then if you click on the Albi page again, just go back to the main page. Uh, no, just just where it says. Oh no, sorry, dashboard. Uh, settings and then Albi page. Oh, yeah. And then click on that page, like your page. Oh, there. Okay. Beautiful. Now you can bookmark that. Uh, yeah. Now, see, does it oh, look, and now my Al Albi goes green when he's on. See my little Albi? He was orange before. Now he's green because he's working. Now, what's the URL? So get ld.com slash p slash electra. All right. I'm going to send you some stats. Mm -hmm. This will let me in. What's going on? Oh. Oh. Why is that not with me? I get into my own account. Hang on. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. You're doing the try it out connecting to bit refill. No, 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 just just trying to send um Uh, so is that a custodial wallet, the uh, Albi wallet? It is, but you can actually move it to your own node as well. Okay, sure. Yeah. I saw that setting. So when we set up our nodes with these, we can attach them to this. We can create a... That's right. Yeah. Exactly right. This is not letting me send it there. That's good. <laughs> the worst when you... <laughs> Trying to do some live. <laughs> Hang on. Ali. Oh, because it's trying to open this stupid extension. Did you have this issue with um Gordon with Vida? That thing. Oh, I haven't tried it yet. I'm just doing it now. Okay. Let's do that next. And I just want to send you some stats there for us. Might take a few minutes for the stats to come to. No, no, no. I'm just trying to like get into mine to send them to you. <laughs> oh, okay. That should be instant. Okay, here we go. Right. No, why? It's not letting me. I don't know. I've messed up my extension, I think. Anyway, um, actually, if you go go back to, to Albi and just see if yeah. we can bring up the, instead of the page, um, go to wallet. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Hello, Trey. If it couldn't verify, if you're using Brave, you have to uh, you have to um, drop the shield. I'm on Chrome. Okay. Actually, it might not have taken it. I'm not sure what it's done here now. Maybe just on a on a count there, if you can see. I just want to see if we can get up a QR code for. Well. Mm, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, uh, one sec. Hang on, blue wallet. Right. Maybe I can pay it to the address instead. So you're just sending it to electra at getelby.com. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like email for, for your Lightning account. All right. So hang on. Let's so go. Like and I can create an invoice. I can yep. say. Um, uh, actually, yeah, do that. Do that. And I'll, I'll okay. do it. Now. So, um, invoice. Yep. Create so, invoice. Uh, oh, there we go. Receive. So you could be with someone and get paid while you're talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully this comes through. I'm doing it from all to Toshi, so we'll see. Yep. You got it? Yay! Yay! There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Very exciting. If you go, go back to settings um, on the main page and then dashboard, it should bring it up. And then, yeah, you can connect your blue wallet. In fact, we may as well do it now. So if you go uh -huh. uh, dashboard wallet, sorry, in the middle. Yep. Should bring it up. There you go. Two sats. <laughs> um, but yeah, we may as well connect it now. So if you install blue wallet on your mobile. Mobile. And then. Where is that? Is that, that in the Google Play Store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Did you get into Vita yet, Electra? No. So I wonder what's going on with that. We might. Uh, might. If, if Vita is to do with Strike, then it's not available in Australia. Uh, okay. Well, that's oh, what I, I thought, but it was working. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, you got in here, Kieran, with your uh, Australian phone number? Yeah. Okay. Mine. So is, blue, is it called Blue Wallet Bitcoin? Blue yeah. Wallet like the word? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Maybe we'll, we'll go from the start with Vita again and see what the go is. Yeah, so it says to me, could, could not verify your, your account information. Yeah. How the hell did I sign up? <laughs> I mean, I've got a. Well, no, it definitely was because Tick Tick signed up with his phone number as well. Maybe get rid of what? that. Do you Tick, use Tick. a mobile number? Yeah, I think so. Go maybe go back back to the the main page, like the sign up page, and we'll just run through it again. Uh, all right, so sign up. Yep, Australia. Yeah, I definitely did this. Me too. <laughs> We're almost like candid or something. Maybe get rid of the 04. So just have the four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I, I tried did that. that. I tried with 03 and that too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Unless they've canned it, that would really. Not be cool settings. No, I keep getting that. Yeah, that's what I did too. No matter how I put details in. I drop into the help and it says this page is missing. Damn. You know, I, de I definitely did it with my phone number and it says Visa. Did you do it on a mobile phone? Yeah, yeah, I did. I tried it on a mobile. Okay. It wouldn't allow enough numbers in for me for my mobile. <laughs> right. Vida dot page. Damn. <laughs> Electra, you make me feel so much better. I'm such a tech dinosaur. <laughs> but that you had trouble too makes me feel oh, whole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you always ask me to check first, Karen. That's all right. You don't have to go through thinking that about yourself. <laughs> 
chances are the thing doesn't work. That's what Web3 is all about, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half the time it doesn't work. And let's poke it around a bit. Yeah, no, it definitely did. Just trying to see. It's yeah, it was pretty seamless. Just having a look on here. Chris was able to sign up as well from a bit refill. He had no issues. I'm just trying setting up on my phone now. What if you just put no phone number? I'll try that next. Because <laughs> I suppose the other thing we could do, well, at least today, if we can get everyone set up with Albi and then figure this out later on, I suppose, because I think it's pretty awesome. Like if, um, if we can get it working properly and make it easy enough for other people to sign up as well, I suppose. No, it's not working on my mobile either. It requires a phone number. Damn. So I better investigate that. Maybe we can just contact them and say, look, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wonder what the go is. That's weird. Yeah, that's and, um, and on my phone, it's as glitchy as too. It's really weird playing weird stuff. Yeah, well. Great concept though. I hope they can get it working. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I pinged um, Jack Mallers on there for 38 cents. <laughs> and it works. It's crazy. Oh, this is, yeah, okay. If you bring, bring up your Albi again on your screen. Yeah. Uh, this one. The other one. And uh, uh, the next tab across. <laughs> this so, one, yep. And then uh, see Blue Wallet there? How it says you can use Zeus. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you've already got it. Okay, cool. Um, share connections. Sorry. Okay, so from um, from the blue wallet, I'm just trying to remember how we do it. It should have a connect option. It has. Um, it says add now. Yeah, do that. Uh huh. And it says add lightning wallet. Yep. Should be it. Oh, I better give it a name. Um, what shall I call it? Uh, it well, should well. be like it should just be Electra. Um, hang on. Okay. Next, that'll be to the uh, how did I do it? Electra one. Yeah, the phone app is totally glitching out. It won't even take my email address. For Albi of oh, for Blue Wall. No, for Vita. Vita. Oh, We've got, got an app today. Okay. So oh, no, now I'm up to. Uh, Kieran, am I importing a wallet or am I creating a wallet? So uh, blue wallet. Importing a wallet. Importing. Import wallet. It says that at the bottom. From memory. Okay. Now it's asking me to enter seed words publicly with or anything I've got. So I'll have to. Um, no, that's not oh. that right. Sure. Just trying to remember where, how I actually. Can or import a file. So I yeah, might just. Look at mine. <laughs> yeah, imported lightning. Yeah, so you want to import, that's what mine is. Mm -hmm. And whoop. hey, I got three cents 11 minutes ago for something. <laughs> All right, um, I just um, turned off my screen sharing because I had to show my connection credentials. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cool, cool, cool. I'm importing a wallet and I'm then it showed a um a yeah, it's got it. You got it? Showed a QR code that I could then scan and now yeah. it seems to be importing the wallet with my two sets. Woohoo! That's awesome. See? Blue wallet. That so I've got get LB on my computer and I've got blue wallet on my phone. Yeah, so it's the same Is thing. Is it like a synchronized? Thing. Yep, it's totally synchronized. And the the so this is the the learning process, right? So you have this is custodial that you have at the moment, but you're using a non-custodial wallet to connect to that node. Once you're comfortable with that idea, then you can move to running your own node and running Albi connected to that. So the way they've created Albi, it's really clever. It, it's like it's it's easy to use. 
and you can kind of progress to to running it yourself eventually and connecting your blue wallet to that but i think yeah for today <laughs> let's just leave it at that. i think that you've done really well no, that's um, great. i think getting those steps together like and like the map of where we're starting and where we're getting to yeah um that's a really great lesson for our google classroom i think or 100 percent, 100 percent um so so is that um on the on the blue wallet, do you have a lightning wallet? Do you? Uh, it says yes. Add wallet. Yep. Yep. Yeah, lightning, and then Bitcoin, yeah. lightning, or vault. Uh, lightning. And then you import it. That's really interesting with uh, Vita. I want to look into that because I was super excited to kick that off like immediately. And it looks like you can get played for podcasting. So you can yep. use, you get Albi. This is, I love this. I talked about this with um, um, Heather Smith, who I, she's an accounting app um, advisor, very well known and influencer in the accounting industry. And I was explaining Web3 to her. She does a lot of podcasting and mm -hmm. her podcast is so good, but she doesn't really get paid for them. And she puts a lot of time into them. And I said, I would pay for your podcast. Yeah. And I would love to you how to monetize your podcast because there's tell it to, so much tell it to come on here and we can run you through it i reckon that's really good I'm, I'm, I'm working on it <laughs> so it, it's got your uh choose your lnd hub so i've got hodlehub.io is that mm -hmm. right uh sorry sorry God, i can't see it's your oh, screen's blurry oh, <laughs> no just just for setting up yeah no for setting up my lightning wallet it says choose your lnd hub Oh yeah, so that'll be your Albi um, page or the the settings page. So it should come up with a QR code for you to connect to it. Ah, okay. No, it's just giving me um, it's giving me a link. Hodlehub.io. Hodlehub. Okay. So you've gone. Oh, we should actually share add a wallet. The process. Add a wallet. Hang on. Yep. So add a wallet first. Yep. So I'll add, add a wallet. I'm just doing it on mine at the same time. Oh, uh, yeah. And then and import at the bottom. I import. Okay, sure. Okay. Sorry, I was I was trying to get into Vita and I wasn't watching Electra do hers. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, and then there should so, be. So, yeah, I've got import. And then what do I do? Receive send or i hit a receive on my wallet do i am my albi wallet if you want to just bring up your screen i can show you i've, I've got it on mine uh, okay sure may as well just so yep. as well, you can follow along um so if you go to your dashboard uh so click out of this actually try settings on that it might come up no no no, nah, sorry, go back back to the Albi page. Yep. Uh, and you want to get rid of the demo part at the top and just uh, press enter. So see where it says get albi.com slash demo. Yeah, ditch that. And then dashboard. Uh, connect, log in, and then wallet at the top there, and then scroll down and just go show your, oh, scroll up, mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. see where it says show your connection credential, yep, click that, and then keep this, pro <laughs> that's all right. Um, just scan that QR code with your phone. With the import? Yep. Is that meant to be a private? It's meant to be private, yeah. We should probably do another one for you. Yeah, but sure. Good to do anyway, just so you get the uh, understanding. Yeah, Adam Curry. He's actually the guy that invented um, podcasting. It's really cool. Right. Yeah, so he's. Oh. I've actually interviewed the um, 
like his offsider, uh, Dave yeah. Jones. He was meant to come on Bitcoin Aggregated uh, yeah. last week or the week before, whenever I was sick and I couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, super cool guy. And it's definitely a um, a game changer. Did that work? So to get it. Yeah, I, yeah, that connected up. Awesome, awesome. Uh, actually, uh, I, so I can, this, Gordon, I can so blur this, this on the recording, so that's okay. Okay, sure. Otherwise, I can just kill that and do a new one. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. I'll blur it. You can do that. Okay, sure. Well, I'll blur right it. Too. Um, yeah, so you're good. So if you go back up and then go to your uh, wallet. Actually, go go to your tab or your um, extension if you can. And then yeah, do a invoice. Where are we? Yep. Receive. Create. Copy it in the chat. No, no, that's all right. I'm doing it through the screen. So we should have, yep. Yeah. I sent you three sets. <laughs> One more. <laughs> and that should also show up in my blue wallet, should it? Yep. Yep. So you see it on blue wallet. And then if you go back to the dashboard. Oh, yep. Yeah, Perfect. I've got it in I've got it in my blue wallet. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. So so this is like it's nice. the step towards being um self custodial. So like the the mm -hmm. wallet of Satoshi's are really good. I think starting point. This is yeah. like the next, and then eventually you run your own node and connect your your wallets, and then run um, channels as well. So that's something I want to look into learning more about because it's I've done it and stuffed it up a few times and like lost a bunch of sets. So it's it's difficult, but like I think it's something worth worth sort of pursuing as well. Um, there's another thing I wanted to talk about today. Um, and we can, we'll probably look at Vita. Actually, I'm going to contact the Vita guys and see what the goal is and tell them what we want to look at doing. Their contact page, if you, um, I, oh yeah, I think I saw the address there, support at. Yeah, yeah I, I will, because I'll see, I'll say, look, we're looking at building out this this um, tutoring platform and I think it's, it's pretty important if we can get everyone on boarded like easily. Um, and I hope they haven't killed something for Australia like in the last couple of days. That would really not be cool. Um, I wanted to talk about this. So this is, I don't know if you can see, is that coming up, the 30 Mint page? Yeah. So 30 Mint is really cool. It's a cool podcast you can listen to. And basically what they're doing is creating um, custodial slash non-custodial um, Bitcoin uh, repositories for countries so basically what the the premise is that eventually there will be no utxos meaning like or there'll be the there'll be like one per a whole group of people so similar to the lightning network where it does settlement um you know after a channel's filled up these guys are building out an open source platform where instead of having like channels you have what they call um, oh, what was the terminology? Uh, uh, guardians. So they have a guardians program. So basically, it's it's going back to what you were talking about before, Karen, about trust. Basically, it's people you can trust to run a multi-sig platform and a node each, and then basically that becomes the way of securing a whole community. So if you have like a third world community or realistically even the majority of Australians, right, who are still used to having a bank account and, you know, having that that sort of trusted third party, they're not they're not ready to be their own bank. Um, Fetty Mint is actually a, a solution for that, right? So it's like you're still getting all the benefits of the BTC blockchain and you're still getting... Um, the security but without the the sort of risk of stuffing it up yourself so what i was thinking and like it's worth listening to the podcast because the, the guy who's developing it with his team really goes into detail about it so it's on the it's one of the last what bitcoin did podcasts um but basically 
what I was thinking immediately, I was like, well, that's us, right? <laughs> like, we would be the best candidate for something like this. One, because obviously we've been in the space for a long time. We're, we're trustworthy. Like, we don't, we're not going to have some scammer join the group and, and be able to, to, to mitigate things. But also having that multi-sig means you have the, the security sort of baked into that. Um, so I was thinking after listening to the podcast, and I, rec- I recommend you guys have a listen to, I'll, I'll share a link with you, um, that, yeah, we approached them and say, look, on, a, on our roadmap, we've got this program we're working on the School of Bitcoin. We w- would be pretty good candidates, I think, to to test this out for a community here. And I'm I'm thinking more so for, um, for sort of older people in Australia. So, like, I've had a number, a number of people come to me recently, um, you know, sort of family friends saying, I want to buy Bitcoin. Can you just do it all for me? I don't want to have to think about it or learn. I'm like, well, no, <laughs> I'm not taking all that risk on. That's crazy. Um, here's a bunch of learning materials and they kind of switch off immediately and go, no, nah, I don't want to learn that. So I was thinking this might be a good pathway for them right so it's like yeah you can do your dca yeah or just dollar cost averaging and yeah you can buy x amount whatever it is um but we have this this trusted way of doing that so anyway just a thought but i think that's for for a a roadmap for us i think it would be a really really cool idea but worth um worth exploring and i'll send it through so you guys can have a listen and then we can maybe chat about it next week thank you yeah it's uh cool i I, that that was posted in decentralized everything, and I did watch it all. It was a bit over over my head, and it also came down to well, I, I went well, yeah, we're teaching about this self custody, and now we're going to this community. So, yeah, it's really interesting that it how is. this is all going to get managed. Yeah, and and that it it sort of all comes back to how DAOs and how DAO funds and multi sigs are all run and. You know, we trust, I guess all the DAOs are trusting a multi-sig wallet. So, That's yeah, right. it's, yeah, we, yeah, Michael had that posted there and and I think it was a good good lead into the um, the next uh, Bitcoin Australian meetup. Oh, yeah. Because, because we're doing wallets and it's probably narrowing it down to what are we going to talk about and who are our list, who are our attendees to the event. Yep. There's still a lot of work to do on Bitcoin 101, but picking some things that we're going to focus on as a as a project. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I guess the structuring of that night. Okay, so if you're a beginner and you want to learn self custody, go here. If you want to do this, go here. If you want to work on building out this this new community thing, well, that's a project, you know. Yep. Yep. So that sounds that sounds pretty good. I think I think this would be pretty cool, and I think yeah, like well, that the whole community that we have with the, the Bitcoin meetups as well. I think there's there's people in there that this might resonate with. And it's still early days for this project, right? So I was just thinking of pinging them and seeing if they were looking at testing with people. And I think we, we've got we'd be candidates for that. Um, yeah, I, post, I posted the link in the chat there. How, oh, no. how, is the, um, how, how are the numbers being managed for the um, the weekly I'm sorry, the monthly meetup. Is it like an email list or is it just everyone remembering to just book into? Do we have any kind of follow up? That's a good point, actually. <laughs> and more that, sure. we can do that I could help with to keep that group sort of keep cohesive and informed. And That's yeah, so there's, um, so for starters, each one's got a meetup. We've got Sydney, Melbourne, and Agnes Water. So anyone that's joined the meetup, when there's a new meetup comes out, they get an alert into their meetup, into their, their meetup. Oh, yeah. Um, so so I, I don't actually get anything from Meetup because it spams me constantly with everything sure. that I might be interested okay. in. Actually, actually have them all go. So it's, it's, I just wonder how to use it because I only want to know about this Meetup, but it sends me about five emails a day. Sure. So. so the, <laughs> so the other... doing the same and not seeing it. <laughs> it is the big question. Uh, you know, Stacks have given us a directive that, you know, at some point we, well, we do need a CRM. I mean, at the moment, we've got people in Discord, which we advertise. Obviously, the ones that receive the meetup, like I said, like you say, I'm similar, Electra. How many do I get there? 
and how many how many groups are you in? So a CRM is, I mean, it seems email. I mean, where is it all? You know. Okay, well, my, it might be time people for still use email. Put, pull it mm. back again and move to a, a WordPress um, site. I'm noticing. I know you're not crazy about WordPress, Kieran, but Albie integrates with WordPress, and I'm seeing a, a whole lot of little Web three apps that integrate with WordPress sites. Yeah. Right? So it could be Web uh, 2.5 for us. Uh, look, um, I'd much prefer that than than we CRM. We can integrate a CRM with WordPress and get it get yeah. it working. Yep, yep. No, what, look, what was there's there's a lot you can do with WordPress, and the fact they they um, support BTC as well, I think is a big big plus. So yeah, them over Wix, a hundred percent. Let's get the ball rolling for sure. Oh, Gordon, we'd be able to. You'd have some people in Meetup, wouldn't you? And we'd be able to get them into a. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It would be quite easy to, to bring our CRMs in together while we're small because, you know, we've got a, a great collective in, in the digital playhouse from different events. Yeah. And, and, and then so we've got the Bitcoin my, meetup. I've got, I'm managing with my accountants on chain pretty well in, in, um, in Wix because I've managed them from the outset tagging and everything. But yeah. the rest of our members in Wix are not identifiable. There is, um, there is, so there is something, we bring in the others. <clears throat> there is something to think about, uh, Electra, with that as well. And I was going over this the other night. Um, honeypots. So because we're in in this space where, you know, there's people with uh, crypto accounts and BTC accounts potentially linked to their email addresses. Yeah. Holding a whole bunch of them is a potential honeypot, right? So even the most secure companies in the world, like Casa. Have been hacked, and that whole list has been taken, and people hacked through their accounts with that. So that's something we probably need to think about. I don't know how you mitigate that, but it's it's a huge issue, and it's a big it's a big, uh, big thing for us. You know what I mean? It's a big, big thing for us to take take on. So mm -hmm. it's something we might need to really consider. One solution I did have, and I. I don't know if this is something we could pursue, but um, looking at another project, so we're looking at with the Alpha project, uh, we were thinking about that specifically. And as part of the onboarding process, we were thinking, well, just set everyone up with um, like session addresses, right? So you, you have the session address that's encrypted. It's not an email address. It can be disposed mm -hmm. at any time. And replace yeah, we don't really want to be. That's not the idea of Web three is to be subscribing with an email address. But at the moment, we just need a point of the point of contact. Don't we? To be, yeah, I know. So we, don't, we really don't want it to be anonymous, but maybe there that should that pseudonymity should be built in. For yeah, something. yeah, somehow. So maybe even like just just as a as a a way of thinking, like a roadmap mm -hmm. of we're going to migrate all these email addresses to session IDs or something like that. And upskill yeah. all those people on how to use that and move okay. away from from email. I don't know. Just we, a yeah, no, I completely hear. If we're going to set up a CRM and have this honeypot, then we need to have a strategy as well to migrate yeah. people away from yeah. Web two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so just to, one of the most difficult things is it, the, this transition from Web two to Web three. Everyone's in Web two, and so we want to use those. But then, what are we actually doing to migrate them over? That's mm. the important. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, it has to be our so, education process, hasn't it? We have to start in Web two, and you do. Yeah. Web, well, well, perfect. Stages. The Web two point five is what friends are calling it. <laughs> we have the the Web two interface, but with the Web three things there. But yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, this 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 video is a perfect example, right? So I've been uploading these to uh, Bitcoin aggregated, and I'm waiting till that ticks over to three hundred followers. Once that happens, then we can migrate to um, Odyssey and the LBRY blockchain. So they automatically do it in the background. So I think oh. like having that as like having a progression to Web3 for everything is kind of the way to go. Um, okay. There's another really good app actually, and this is something I wanted to share. Um, if anyone on Twitter, uh, 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 where am I? It's called Tweetoshi. <laughs> so it's a new app. Integrates with your your um <clears throat> your Twitter account and 
you sign in with your lightning address. So you, your Albi one you just mm. created, you sign into it and then any tweets you do can go onto the lightning network and people can pay you for your tweets in real time. I'm like that's awesome. So like little things like that. I know there was something similar to this, like with um, on Ethereum called Peepith. So I don't know if that has sort of um, taken off or not, but I thought this is amazing. And it's really good implementation as well. So you can actually tip people um, when you retweet, you can actually send them sats as well. And it's yeah, done, done really, really well. I know you're, you're on Twitter a fair bit, Gordon, so it might be worth it, it investigating for you. Yeah, sure. I got a, um, as part of the growing community, there's a link here too for uh, Bitcoin Island in the Philippines. Oh, I yeah. You've seen those guys before? Uh, yes, yes, I shared that and as well. That's very exciting. And some friends are going to the Philippines and I want to go. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's, there's also something uh, which is with, with the implementation uh, of Tarot uh, Taproot onto Bitcoin, now we've got some apps being built through that as well. Right. So Tarot is a new Taproot powered protocol for issuing assets on the Bitcoin blockchain. Oh, cool. Guys, so much stuff. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? So much stuff. <laughs> so it's a bit of the it's a bit of the question that that gets raised. You know, obviously, is being raised is about with the it was brought up on um, Nuggets. Actually, he's got a private chat back there, or a private group again, and and it's brought up that you know, while ETH is now moving over into to where it's moving to. Um, so there's lots of conversations whether it's becoming more centralized or governed or regulated or the like. So, you know, is the focus going to swing back to Bitcoin? So it's a great opportunity now that they're the, that that in Bitcoin is the proof of work network. And so what's going to be built out? And there's tons of stuff getting built out. One, Stacks has got, you know, has definitely uh, got, a, got a lot of developers and, and fi financial and funding behind it. Uh, yep. Now you've got the tap route was implemented recently. So we're going to see things build out there. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be an explosion of things happening around the lightning network, RSK stacks. So it's amazing. Yeah. A lot to keep up with a lot to keep up with. It's amazing. And then you see news.com.au Bitcoin and Epic failure. <laughs> Oh, we love that. Stuff. You see that? It's so El good. Salvador experiment, a complete failure. <laughs> what? Yeah. By some like, banker. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's crazy. a couple of things too uh, for stacks, finding some. Oh, nice one, Electra. There's a couple so of things. To do with... with Twitter. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say, um, reckon I'm safe giving this access to my Twitter account? Yep. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. <laughs> Carry on, Gordon. Just need to check. <laughs> yeah, I found some things too uh, this week in regards to bridge aggregators. Um, there's a few places that stacks could be. Uh, I was probably bringing these up, Karen, in our in our meetup, like feeding stuff into stacks, new things. One of the things I'm noticing, you know, around the, some of these blockchains. So at the moment anything that's not Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, like they're all in the race to get adoption through mm -hmm. devs, wallets. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a couple of the things would be is, you know, how good is the stacks onboarding? So, you know, how many places? One thing that Elrond focused on heavily is like just getting people being able to get access. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good little thing that we can add value to the Stacks network to see, you know, how their onboarding is. And then in the aggregators as well in the bridges. Um, yeah, so I found this new one called, uh, well, I don't know how new it is, but Leafy um, oh, yeah. the other day. So there's a couple of cool links there to, for, for yeah, it, it's, you know, I think Leafy is some bridge aggregator, which if you if your bridge goes down, then this aggregator takes care of problems. Um, bit to learn about there. Because going between, uh, we're studying interoperability in the in the advanced deployment of blockchain at the moment. Oh, so awesome. it came across 
um, that's an interesting thing to have a look at. So yeah, looking at where stacks, because these some of these major platforms, onboarding platforms, I, I think there was a wallet the other day um, where you could buy some crypto. I'll have to pull it up for stacks. But as we get those, feed them through to stacks. Hmm. Yeah, super cool. Oh, that actually reminds me, there's so many things. Does it reminds me, there's this, um, where are we, Stacker News as well. So this has popped up. So I don't know if you're familiar with Hacker News. It's a, it's a pretty big uh, RSS feed that um, a lot of people subscribe to. But Stacker News is built on Lightning as well. So you can actually write content and get paid in sats um, directly. And it's huge. Like I've got it on my RSS feed and it just pops off wow. all the time. So I was thinking this could be something cool, um, particularly for you, Karen, because um, you're pretty, a pretty prolific writer. I think um, you could really make use of this and it would be cool to work on some projects with you. Speaking of which, um, the other thing I wanted to do, and we could probably utilize this um, as well as GitHub, because I want to use GitHub for the um, learner provocations. Where am I? Too many screens open. Um, I was thinking, so like the same way that Stacks have their grant applications, we do that for learners, push it out to the community and say, you know, but smaller, smaller projects. So, you know, we base everything in Satoshi's. Um, what project do you want to build? Uh, what problem do you want to solve? What project do you want to build? I was going to start writing that up, but I might get your help. Karen, if you wouldn't mind, if we can work on a provocation for that together. So like having a, a solid document, it's kind of explaining what that means um, so that, you know, any learner could come up, any students could come up, read it and go, oh, cool. All right, I'll apply for that. And then we can kind of support them. So I was thinking. Yeah, I think that. Week. I think that's awesome, Kieran. I think they've all the template's already there. We don't need to reinvent it. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit about the governance in there that'll be interesting. And as we go along, we create our own what our governance will look like. Yep. As to who decides and how it's decided. But at the moment, they've got a system there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think I think the the first part or the key part is getting the the language right so it's it's understandable by any learner sort of coming along and saying, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. On a participant. There was um Karen, I know you're really busy, but and and I don't want to take you away from the school of Bitcoin, but Lawfi Dow are wanting to create a children's, whether that's a young children or teens or what is it, a book about the Dow and about NFTs. Um you know, there's so whether it's and and yeah, there was you know, I, I said, oh, look, I'll reach out and see if there's anyone that's um, been involved in writing children's books. And it's not a project that's going to happen immediately, but if that was of interest at all, um, it, I guess the Law by Dow, Electra and I have been attending their, their groups. The reason being when we sought legal advice, um, well, directions about how you could operate DAOs in Australia, I wouldn't say necessarily legal advice, but we sought some advice um, as to, you know, what that looks like. And so Junit Joni Pirovich, who we had a chat with about what's going on in Australia, um, she's created Law by DAO. So it's sort of connected a bit, but depends on people's time or if there's any students that would be interested or other, I guess, people that are interested in Web3 that would be interesting in, in, in assisting in the project. Um, yeah, we'd love some people to join Lawfi Dow to help that. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to help, um, and I'm certainly with the language and the children. But you have to make sure that the technical stuff is really clear because that's the part that I'm not good at. Yeah, sure. So that might be about the. It's there's one side to it. There's, um, I guess, in any project, you've got the people with the technical ideas, then you've got the creatives. But anyway, yeah. there. They're on at, um, we meet at four o'clock on Fridays and I can send you a link. It's not on Friday, they're, um, they've got a public holiday in Victoria this Friday. Okay. So I've just posted a link for Karen to just have a look at some of the videos and I don't know why the first ones aren't there because the first one would be good to listen to, but I might find it and forward it to you. <laughs> if you just so with Law Fout. So you need to have a look at it, I'm happy to... Um, 
and and it's probably an interesting way forward too. It's like we meet each week with the with the school of Bitcoin, and then how we can get some others to, I guess, now come in and maybe get some like some advancement groups. So you know, some people that are working on different parts of the project as we go along um, yeah. to be, become a bit more inclusive. So in Law Fi Dow, we meet every Friday as a group, and then there's working groups go off and get busy on projects. You know, cool. And uh, so yeah. Very cool. And I think an important important part of as we go through for Australia, I think it is an important thing um, as to what our regulations are going to look like. Um, it, it's very interesting around this decentralized organizations as to, you know, what unfortunately somewhere down the line, there is some legal what you are. The world's full of this legal thing, partnerships, companies. Um, not for profits, um, cooperatives, and each country is sort of there's different countries developing their own rules around you know different types of how you can structure yourself and and it's not too far away. Looks like it's accelerating fairly quickly. The Andrew Braggs, our Senator Braggs, has just um, posted up some legislation for Australia in one area. And then I think there's other stuff coming. It's there's a lot coming in the pipeline where we are going to see regulation come in. So if we want to contribute to the conversation, then Law Fi Dow is one place. I'm cool. happy to. But I, I just want to show you something linked to that. Another book I bought at Bodie, Festival of Dangerous Ideas, is a children's book called no, no. Vote for Me. <laughs> and it's about the ballot system and everything. Mm. And um, it starts off. Um, the students of Mayhem School are fed up. They have a hideous uniform. The tuck shop sells only health food snacks. First of all, <laughs> covered in air. Everyone I love it. <laughs> Even the teachers, it is decided that every class will have a student that speaks on their behalf. Miss Sparks, your, your sixth class, can't decide who should represent them. Jack thinks he'd be the best because, well, he thinks he's the best. Kira wins every race, so he should win too. And on and on and on. And looking at voting voting and ballots, <laughs> I mean, fabulous is this, um, for making something accessible to young children when you're yeah. talking about serious matters. Yeah. And that's very much the sort of things that I, um, that I do through children's rights and, mm. <laughs> and different things. Hey, we expect so much from children. We box them in so many ways. You by this age, you have to be doing that by and if you can't yeah. do that, you're a failure and so many things. But we never actually know, or oh, sorry, unless we have very, very <laughs> unusual special teachers <laughs> and leaders, mm -hmm. get a chance to know where children really are at, what they really want to know and how they can learn from where they're at. So I think that's a beautiful example. <laughs> Definitely. Of, um, yeah. yeah, well, there was, there was something similar that the uh, Blockchain Centre did years ago. Um, and we had a bunch of copies at school. We actually wrote like a children's book for crypto. It was uh, it was interesting. Like it was done it was done pretty well. And uh, like the animations and stuff were good. It was just um, yeah, kind of focused on a few cryptos like Ripple and stuff that like <laughs> kind of don't. Half of them don't even really exist anymore, like Namecoin and that sort of thing. But it was cool. We could to resurrect something like that, I reckon. Yeah. Hey, Karen. Um, I've I've got to duck off in a minute, everyone. Uh, did we get in regards to the Minecraft server oh, yeah. idea? You did um, some homework on that. No word back from Tom. So I reckon we kind of pursued ourselves. I think. Um, yeah. So there's, I think. From the looks of it, it's actually made a dock. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, that'd be awesome because I've got my um, we've got our IT guy Courtney here, and his son's a big Minecraft. I, I just reached out to him again because I've got homeschoolers coming in today at one o'clock. Oh, and nice! I need a Minecraft server like today, <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so I'll just let's do it. But, but that's okay. I just thought, um, I mean, they're mostly just cloud ones which you pay, you know. 10 users, 20 users, 30 users, whatever, but uh, ultimately getting our own server set up. So in the short term, I'll just do a paid cloud, but if we're going to have a server, what that would look like and... and Yeah, well, I, I factored in sort of a, a, a hosted 
costing and for how many users, etc. Um, in that doc, I don't, did I share it with you? I don't know if I did. Uh, if not, that'd be great. Maybe if you got a chance, we could jump in and have a chat about it and um, make that a project. Um, I think we should get Matt from New Zealand in as well. So he's got three schools that he can get okay. in immediately with us. Perfect. Um, and I was thinking about the different worlds. Um, his recommendation was to go with the Java client still, which I agree with. Um, okay. Um, so gg.servers, you can do 144 player slots for... Just bring it up. Hang on. Yeah, if you can, if you can share that, uh, Doc, that'd be awesome. And if we can catch up. In, yeah, in maybe a separate, that'd be awesome. Yeah, let's do that. And I'll put it in, put it in there. And um, cool. All right, yeah, we'll do that. We'll make time for that. That'll be good. And yeah, uh, I, basically, I mean, as part of the digital playhouse, um, I'll, I'll work out. I mean, I've got, um, yeah, I'll get funding. I've got people that want to give us some money. I've got, obviously, we, we we've got one contributor so far. Um. And and that's probably another chat we can have a have a chat about where he you know he like to see some funds go, but I've got some other people that want to give us some funds. Yeah. Um, so it's about allocating well, it to projects. Yeah. We're free on Friday if we want to work this out. How about you guys? Um, my time's pretty uh, scarce at the moment, and let me have a look. I just put a link in for the children's rights website, and um, there's something new on it at the moment. Mm -hmm that um, might be interesting. It's um, a famous quote from Janusz Korczak, the guy whose life, um, found, whose work was the foundation for the Convention of the Rights of the Child. One of his quotes that I use a lot is, um, um, no, uh, the world, no one should leave the world as it is, or the world should not be left as it is. And they're using that as an international youth film festival Love for it. young people to submit a film about what does this quote mean or what do you think about it? And it's such a powerful um, quote <laughs> uh, with wow, the, wow, the way the world is now, do you really want to leave it as it is? You know, what, can we, what should be done or what could we do? Um, so I think- Very cool. This, this might be cool, cool for the, the homeschoolers coming through, Gordon. Yeah, sure. I've got to um, narrow it down to some actual projects I can really execute on. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I know what you're saying. Hey, <laughs> as in, yeah. What I'm finding with the the kids is obviously, you know, that that when it's free range, um, yeah, they sort of wander off into the paddocks and you can you don't see them again. But if you, yeah. it's learning that you've got to have some once you've identified what their interests, you have to put some structure in place to get them to return and. Um, yeah. keep doing you know what they're yeah. interested in is really important but um but, know, just a general discussion no one should yes. work the world as it is or it depends how it's translated the world should not be left as it is <laughs> um i don't speak polish i don't know <laughs> but just the fact that um that the world's in a rotten place mm. but what are we doing about it? or what can we do about it what could we as kids or as whatever <laughs> you know lead to so many interesting things in so many different areas and it was launched, I don't know exactly which country, but it's certainly not an English speaking company <laughs> country. Fantastic. The um the website's looking beautiful, Karen. Um Mahine's doing a great job. <laughs> She's doing a great job. She's doing a really great is. job. Very talented. I, is this is this one that you're a project you're involved in, Karen? Yeah, I was invited to lead the Korchak Association in Australia. And, oh wow. Um, nice. It's just, it's it's hard because of with COVID and all the lockdowns and everything. Children's rights have been wow, well, you know, very. No, this very is fantastic. Um, I'd mm -hmm. love to. I'll, I'll definitely because one of the elements I think for homeschooling is is film. It's 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 there's a group of kids that would love to do film, so that's awesome. Yeah, and and, and even things kids not doing film to know there's going to be a children's film festival coming up. That's great, <laughs> and um, on their activities on on the activity section about. What's important to you? Because I mean, that's sort of the base of values, isn't it? What, and, and they can um, write something or draw something or make a video of them. Just, you know, a very short 40 second video, whatever is important. You know, there's just so many different things that, for children to have a voice, because that's one of the big problems these days, student agency, student voice, who's making all the decisions for kids, <laughs> you know? And just for kids to have, to have a place where their voice can be heard. Yeah, anyway, very I don't know more about that, but um, I just thought the film 
actually put built for kids to do films might be something interesting. So definitely, that's cool. Ours. Great, Karen. We'll have a look. I've got to run, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Bye. <laughs> See you tonight. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. bye. Um, Karen, did you did you want to catch up after this for? It, it, you said you could before, but if you can't, I understand that. No, it's okay. Just, just give us 10 minutes. I'll, I'll end this and then I'll call you back. Yep. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>